Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree Fall Farmhouse DIYs for you. But in today's video, I'm going to be duping some Michael's Fall Decor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take mostly Dollar Tree items. I'm going to dupe Michael's Fall Decor because let's be honest, Michael's stuff is ridiculous. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around. Click that red subscribe button. That way you don't miss another Dollar Tree or DIY. I also do lots of giveaways on my channel and thrift flips, much, much more. So definitely stick around. That way you don't miss another DIY moment. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think they would enjoy it as well. I'm sure you probably hear my kids in the background. I'm a mom. It just is what it is. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. Okay, friends, so when I went to Michael's a few weeks back, all they had off of their items was 30%. So when I tell you guys what their price is, I take that 30% off of the ticket price. So just to clarify that real quick, let's start off with the first project. I take these three boxes from Dollar Tree. They are the ones with the little label holders in the front, and I flip them over and take the tag off by heating them up. I then just sand off the excess residue and then glue them together with some hot glue and I also picked up this 30 second bond glue. It's by DAP and it's called Rapid Fuse and I wanted to check out how well it works and surprisingly it did hold these boxes together really nicely. Next, I pull out eight large popsicle sticks and I start by taking one of them and cutting off the ends. I then cut the end off of another one and measure how long of a piece I need to complete one row to cover the top of these boxes. So altogether, like I said, I needed eight, so four shorter ones and four longer ones. I then just mix up some stain with my acrylic paint and it's kind of like the color of the front of these boxes. I wanted them to blend in really nicely and the front of these boxes is like a faux wood. So I did go in with some antique wax and a very, very tiny brush while my faux stain was drying and it was still a little bit wet and I just put some streaks through those popsicle sticks um, like I said to make this look like faux wood and make it look like it had streaks in it. I then just glued them down with some hot glue alternating as I went. So the first row I put the long and the short um, so I put the long on the left side and the short on the right side and then the second row I swapped that and so on and so forth. So if that didn't make sense you could see what I did in the last clip. I then just glued down three of the glass flute looking candle holders from Dollar Tree, the longer one in the middle and the two shorter ones on the end. And then I just took some greenery that I had in my stash. I do believe I got these from Walmart and I clipped off the edges of the greenery and I put them together and then tied them together with some floral wire. I then just glued them down with some hot glue. Now the middle of this needed a little something, so I took some pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I took two cream colored ones that were on the skewer sticks, whatever you wanna call it, pick. Yeah, that's what it is, pick. Um, so I took two of them that were on the pick and I just pulled them off of the pick. And then this orange one that I painted with my Moss Waverly chalk paint, those were the ones on the little clips. So before I painted it, I took the stem out. I painted it with the moss. And then while the paint was still wet, I went in with my antique wax and I just highlighted all of the indentations on the pumpkin. I then put the stem back into it and glue these down with some hot glue right into the middle. 
Now to finish this project off, I take some of my moss and I just kind of glue it down in spots that needed a little covering. That way you couldn't see any of that wire and you, I kind of wanted to cover that the bottom of the flute up just so that way it looked more uniform and professional. Look at this, you guys. I love it so much. I really enjoy doing dupes because it helps me to do projects that I wouldn't normally do, and I just absolutely love the way this turned out. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Would you buy it from Michaels or would you make it yourself? Okay friends, so I just wanted to thank Jennifer times five and Claudia for the craft supplies. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out in my next video, check the link in the description box below or you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash allthingscrafty. Now you guys know you don't have to support me monetarily. There are so many different ways you can support my channel and um, you know, help me out by giving me a big thumbs up, sharing with your family and friends, subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. You can also help your favorite creators by just clicking on the ads or watching the ads 30 seconds or more because that is how we get paid from YouTube. So whatever way you support me, just know that I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Okay friends, so this one was super easy. So I start off with a Dollar Tree wreath and cut the tag off of it. Now, I didn't like how bushy the one was at Michael's. You can certainly make yours that big, but I wanted mine a little bit smaller and I wish I had used the orange berries or I should say, I wish I had picked up more packs of them because I only had one pack and I knew that one wouldn't do it. So I was kind of forced into using these red berries. So I take them out of the package and I take all of those green leaves and cut them off. Next, I go in with my hot glue and I glue down all of them all the way around the wreath using the stem as basically the place where I glue it and I kind of tuck that end stem under the last cluster of berry if that makes sense and like I said I just go all the way around the wreath with that technique Next, I take the berries that I had left over and I kind of cut them up and just fill in any of the spots that I could still see that wreath showing through. Now, as many of you know, when you go to pull these berries apart, sometimes they're so stuck together that they leave like the white foam left behind. And I didn't have an exact color of these berries to fill that in. So I did just go in with my ink Waverly chalk paint because they did have little black spots on them anyway. So it definitely blended in and looked just fine in the end. Um, but I do wish I had like an exact color, but you guys know my saying it is what it is so i take these little mini pumpkins from a pack of um, scented pine cones from dollar tree and i just dry brush them with my cashew chalk paint and glue them down Next, I take this little piece of scrap from a sign that I had taken this part off and I always keep all of my scraps because like I always say, you never know what you're gonna need and when you're gonna need it. So I just sanded off a little piece of paper that was stuck to the corner and then I give it a distressed coat of my cashew chalk paint. 
Now I wasn't too sure what I was going to put on this to attach to the wreath and then I came across my welcome transfer. There are several different sizes and fonts of the word welcome so I did go with the cursive welcome that would fit on this sign. I cut it away from the rest of the words. I fuzz it really good with my fuzzing cloth meaning put some fuzz on the back of it that way it doesn't stick to our sign and stretch when you go to pull it down and then I use my black chalk paste to transfer on that word when you pull back your transfer you are left with this beautiful crisp and clean image and this is my favorite part and I literally never get tired of this step look how amazing this came out you guys I love it so much so anyway once I was done with the wording then I just put some hot glue down each side of that little welcome sign and I attach it to the back of my wreath last but not least I made a simple burlap bow I cut the ends on a dovetail and then I just kind of place it down on my wreath in different spots to see where I liked it. I ultimately decide on a diagonal on the left hand top corner and then I just take some hot glue and I glue that down. And you guys, I love this wreath so much. It is actually hanging on my door right now because I am actually getting excited for fall this year. So let me know in the comments down below which wreath do you like better, this wreath or the one at Michael's for way too much money. <laughs> So if you're new here, my name's Melissa. I am so grateful that you're here. And each week on my channel, I thought that it would be really fun to share with you guys my earrings of the week. So for this week, of course, I've got Walmart earrings. Look how beautiful they are, you guys. They're these very lightweight feathers. They're gold. One is a little bit longer than the other side. I think that's just like a little design element to be different. So I love them so much. If you want to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week and get a shout out in my next video, then definitely check the description box below for my P.O. Box information. I appreciate and love every single one of you so much. And with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Okay friends, moving on to the next project. This was probably one of my favorites to make. I was so excited when I saw this at Michael's and saw the price tag and said, oh heck no, I can make this much, much cheaper. So I start off with two pieces of poplar. I measure out 20 inches. Now in the end, I do end up cutting this shorter. So if you do this project, just cut yours down to 15 inches. Next, I flip my piece of poplar over because I'm going to get all four pieces out of two pieces, if that makes sense. So I cut two at the top and two at the bottom, different sizes, and I did cut those on a 45 degree angle. That way they fit together really nicely. Next, I take a sign from Dollar Tree, I lay it down over my piece, and I mark where I need it cut for the little box at the bottom. Once I had those cut, two of those I should say, then I lay it down at the bottom, just one of the signs. I lay it down so I can kind of gauge where I'm going to need my X pieces, and then I just lay those X pieces down and I mark and cut those as well. Now I figured out a trick. You guys think that I'm some expert, but you guys, there is 
no rhyme or reason to the way that I do this. It's not professional by any means. I literally just lay my piece down. I get another piece of anything that's near that has a flat edge that I can line up right with the other like cross piece if that makes sense and then I just mark it and cut that down. So please don't get discouraged. I know you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it because I'm telling you guys, I'm no professional. So anyway, when I was editing, I realized that I didn't have the clip of me cutting these shorter pieces from my scrap uh, large stir sticks. Whenever I use not the entire stir stick, I always save them. So I use them on this project and I just cut those down for the sides of our box. So I did just wanna mention that, that way you guys didn't get confused. But I want to put lines in these Dollar Tree signs and I want them to line up with the side pieces. So all I do is lay down the side piece and mark where each side piece is going to meet the front and the back of the sign if that makes sense. And then I go in with my utility knife and just make scores on those lines. Now I want this to give the illusion that the side pieces and the front pieces are all wood instead of the front and back just being these Dollar Tree signs and then the side pieces being actual wood. So anyway, once I scored these lines, then I do go in with a little embossing tool I think these are I don't know don't quote me I know you guys will let me know in the comments <laughs> but I take this little tool and it has a ball at the end of it and I just go in those lines and kind of scratch out the excess pieces of those boards that way when you go to paint this like I said it looks like wood next I take my faux stain that I made that I have been using pretty much in every single video for a while now. It dries really quickly. It's the perfect color, so that's a win-win in my book. But once I had every single piece um, stained, quote unquote, then I take the side pieces and I sand down all the way around the edges just to make this look old and weathered. Next, I lay my four side pieces. Um, next to each other and then I take four scrap dowel rods that I had and I just glue those directly onto the side so that the bottom of the pieces of wood or pieces of stir stick I should say are flush with the dowel rod. I then just reinforce them with some hot glue and because I didn't want you to be able to see this sign now you don't end up seeing it anyway because I put floral in there, but just in case, um, I gave both of the front of these signs a good coat of my truffle Waverly chalk paint. Now, because this sign from Dollar Tree doesn't look like the wood stained, I figured I would try just using that stain on it. And surprisingly, you guys, I'm shocked it literally looks just like the stir sticks. Now, because you couldn't really see those lines that I ended up um, scoring and cutting, I do go in with some of my chalk paint in cashew and I just go over those edges as well as those lines in the middle to make it stand, to make it stand out more. Okay guys, we're finally at the fun part, assembling our piece. So I start by flipping the Dollar Tree sign over so that the front is facing me. And I take our side pieces with some hot glue and I glue those down. Once I had the side pieces glued down, then I go in with the front piece of our box and I glue that down with some hot glue as well. So once I put this together, I was like, oh my goodness, Melissa, you forgot the bottom pieces. <laughs> so I just take some large stir sticks, I lay them out on the bottom, cut them down, and then I faux stain those as well, and then attach those with some hot glue. To 
to attach our frame, I used some hot glue right in the corners. And then once I had them all glued together with the hot glue, then I go in with my electric stapler, which is linked in my Amazon store in the description box below. All of my links are all in one place now. You will see link all all my links are in one place here in the description box and then you will see a link tree link so i just wanted to clarify that all of the chalk couture products i used will be there my amazon store my vip group on facebook literally any link that i have for you guys to find things or whatever the case may be are all in that one link so to attach our box i lay it out to make sure it's going to fit and it's going to be perfect and then i just take some hot glue and i glue that down i then flip it over and i again make sure that my cross pieces are going to fit and then i glue those down with some hot glue as well Now, once again, because I'm not perfect, you guys, I cut wrong, I measure wrong, it just, it, I'm human. It is what it is. <laughs> My famous line. But because I don't cut perfectly, I did have to go in with some wood filler and fill in those gaps where I did not get it perfect. Once the wood filler was dry, then I go in with my zip sander and I just sand it down smooth. I then go in with that same stain that I made and I just cover that up. So I still felt that this was missing a little something even though the original was plain. For me and my taste I wanted to put this at my front door. So I found a coordinate, coordinating transfer. Oh my goodness you guys I cannot talk. Um, and I pull out this come on in and it says come on in and get cozy so I thought that that was perfect for fall because as we all know we like to curl up on the couch with a blanket and watch a movie by the fire or whatever the case may be so like I said I thought that this was perfect once I had it cut and I peeled it off of the backing sheet then once again I fuzzed it that way it didn't stick to this too bad and I transfer my image on and then once again you will see the magic happen now keep in mind that in the description box where I put all of the products that I used for chalk couture in my link tree that way you guys can shop my links if you would like to you don't have to um, but just keep in mind that from that list or from that link I should say the items will go into your cart and then you can add and subtract from that cart as you see fit or as you like just because all of those items go into your cart does not mean that you have to get all of those items so if there's just one item or two items that you want you can just remove the other items so once it was done you guys i added some greenery some flowers a little bit here a little bit there cotton oh my god you guys i am so in love with this thing I already have it at the front door because I just could not contain myself. My husband was like, what are you so excited about? I said, look at this new box I have to go on the front door or by the front door, I should say. I'm so excited. So let me know in the comments down below once again what you guys think. So, of course, I have a new giveaway going on, the long-awaited calendars. So I will send one, one set to two winners and it ends August 27th at 11.59. All you have to do to enter is like this video, comment your favorite place to shop, mine's Walmart, share it with someone who you think would enjoy it, and for an extra entry, go to my link in the description box, join my VIP group, and you will get an extra entry. So for the next project, this is another super duper easy one. This one only cost me $1, you guys. So I took these words from Dollar Tree. I stain it with my faux stain. And then I go in with some Moss Waverly chalk paint and just kind of dry brush or a kind of just give the greenery at the bottom some dimension and some character i did not cover it all the way it's kind of like a distress coat and um 
once I had the moss done, then I still felt that it needed a little something. So I did go in with my cashew ink, no, <laughs> my cashew chalk paint and do the exact same thing, but going a little bit lighter with the cashew color. And then literally you guys, I dry brushed this with my mini dry brush and some chalk paint and it was done. Do you hear me? It was done for a dollar and that sign at Michael's was ridiculously priced. I just love the way that this turned out, you guys. Please let me know in the comments down below if you would make this for a dollar or if you would buy it from Michaels. And for the last project, you guys, I take these three different size pumpkins from Dollar Tree and I start by just taking all the tags and all the things off of the pieces to get them down to their bare bones so that we can work with them. Next, I take the signs on the front side, or I should say for the bigger pumpkin on the front side, and then for the um, shiplap pumpkin on the back side, I just put a little bit of hot glue. That way, when we go to fill those holes, it's not going to fall out the back. Now, this little pumpkin on the uh, base, it did not want to come away from the base, so I just took my heating tool, I heated that glue up, and I was able to pull it right off. I then just cut the excess off that was stuck into the base, and I set that aside. I then fill in our holes on the two bigger pumpkins with my lightweight spackling. Next, I go in with that same paint, Cashew, and I give the bigger pumpkin a distressed coat. While that was drying, I give the smaller pumpkin a distressed coat of my Moss Waverly chalk paint, and then for the Shiplap pumpkin, I did my stain on the first and the third um, piece, I guess you can say. On the second piece, I used Cashew, even though you can't really tell it. On the fourth piece, I use moss, and then on the fifth piece, I just kind of dry brush all the colors on. Next, I just go in every single layer and dry brush a little bit of each color here and there, just to make it all tie together and blend in. Next, I take my arrow and I use my same stain that I've been using and I stain that entire thing. Next, I take my mini chip brush and my cashew and I dry brush our moss pumpkin. And you guys are gonna see it's a lot of dry brushing. If that is not your thing, just totally skip over all of the dry brushing. I understand that it is for a lot of people, but for some, they don't like it. So just look past the dry brushing and you can do your project however you like it. Next, I take this little bow that I made. I believe I got this ribbon at Walmart. Don't quote me. I think I got it in a pack of like six different ones for like three bucks. I don't know. It was something super cheap. But I just made a simple bow, glued it to the top of the shiplap pumpkin. And I also forgot to mention that I did make a bow out of some Dollar Tree ribbon and I glued that to the green pumpkin. I then dry brush some moss Waverly chalk paint and some truffle Waverly chalk paint on the bigger pumpkin. And then I took that leaf and uh, raffia bow that I took off originally from the same pumpkin. I kind of fixed the ribbon so, or the raffia so that it was straighter and I glued that leaf to the top of the pumpkin. Next, I take my Autumn Phrases Transfer that comes with four different phrases. I chose the Hello Pumpkin. I cut it away from the rest and fuzz it, like I've been saying. Next, I lay it down on my arrow. Now, the bottom little curly cues on the peas did not make it, but that's okay because it still looks amazing and you can still see what it says, so I wasn't worried about it. Um, but if you're worried about it, you can you know, 
transfer something on from your computer you can pick a different transfer it's totally up to you but I did transfer that on with my dune chalk paste and once again I am blown away with how crisp those words come out next it's time to glue everything together this is my favorite part so I take the bigger pumpkin and originally I tried to just put the glue on the pumpkin and then set it down but I quickly realized that that was not efficient so I did just grab some Jenga blocks I glued the back of the pumpkin with some hot glue and then I secured it with some Jenga blocks to make sure that it wasn't going to tip over next I just kind of arrange the smaller pumpkins the way that I like and then once I had it exactly where I wanted it then I just take some hot glue and I glue the pumpkins down as well as the arrow And then you guys, literally that was it. This project probably took me a half an hour to 45 minutes tops start to finish. It literally was mostly just painting. So if you have something to dry your paint, you can get this done even quicker. I just kind of worked on one piece and went to the other. And I am so happy with the way it turned out. I love the neutral colors. I love the way the wording looks on all three of the pumpkins. I just love everything about it. So let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. I love every single one per usual week after week I can never choose a favorite because once I choose one favorite then I'm like oh I think I like the other one better uh no so I just don't know but please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys are always so kind and so generous to me and I just don't think you understand how much it is appreciated and like I'll never forget it you guys I really never will and if nobody has told you today you are absolutely amazing and gorgeous you are worthy you are absolutely special to me and I love you with all my heart and soul don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and enter the giveaway by following these steps on the screen and with all that being said I will catch you guys in the next one bye